president. In the South, there have been thousands of racially motivated murders. We need your help. Dr. King, this thing is just going to have to wait. It cannot wait. You've got one big issue, i got 101. Summer it is. There is one movie that everyone in Hollywood and outside of Hollywood is talking about, and it is Selma. The rarest of Hollywood films directed by a black woman, a film getting rapturous reviews from critics and audiences. I myself was a recipient of several texts this weekend from people who were in tears after seeing the film. But it has been branded as controversial in the last few weeks, accused of villainizing President Lyndon B. Johnson needlessly, and in contradiction to the actual facts of the matter. In a Washington Post op-ed, former Johnson aide Joseph Califano wrote, quote, the film falsely portrays President Lyndon B. Johnson as being at odds with Martin Luther King Jr. and even using the FBI to discredit him, as only reluctantly behind the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and as opposed to the Selma March itself. This and other criticism, including a milder critique by historian Mark Updegrove, has sent off a conversation about what actually happened between LBJ and MLK in the run-up to the famous Selma March and the fight for the Voting Rights Act. But in a piece for FlavorWire.com, Jason Bailey pulls back the curtain on what is really going on here with the news supposed controversy over Selma. He writes, quote, And what does Mr. Califano demand in exchange for this betrayal? An amendment on the film, an on-screen correction, a public apology? Nope. The movie should be ruled out this Christmas and during the ensuing award season. That line, which ends Califano's editorial, is a rare bit of transparency because that piece and the fur that has accompanied it is not about correcting the record. It's about keeping Selma from winning Oscars. Now, the campaign for Oscars has become, quite possibly, one of the dirtiest political campaigns of our times. Hundreds of million dollars at stake, and as Bailey points out, it seems every time a historically-based film has a shot in an Oscar, claims of inaccuracy surface. The go-to attack used to not knock such a film off its pedestal. The controversial film Zero Dark Thirty opens nationwide. Did the Hollywood producers skew the story to fit an agenda? Does it tell a misleading story? But is Hollywood's Lincoln in line with history? Some crew members actually say the portrayal of Captain Phillips as a hero in the film is wrong, claiming his actions were actually reckless. So maybe the attack on Selma just shows how much its rivals fear it as an Oscar powerhouse. And joining me now is Jason Bailey, who wrote that piece for Flavor Wire, where he is film editor, also author of the book, The Ultimate Woody Allen Film Companion. I thought this piece was great, and I felt like I, I, I was seeing through the matrix when I read it, because <laughs> you just point out, I mean, time and time again, a film is, gets serious Oscar talk, it right. has some historical basis, and the attacks start on its historical accuracy. You can, you can set your clock to it. I mean, the, and timing in Hollywood is never accidental. When you look at this particular story, you know, the political piece runs December 22nd. The Washington Post op-ed runs December 26th. As someone who writes uh, commentary for the internet, I can tell you that is not the week that you put out your hot right, takes. Right, right, uh, right. Now, maybe that's timed to the limited release of the movie on December 25th, right. or you can note that on the following Monday, the 29th, nominating ballots go out from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. And on that day, like clockwork, Variety, Hollywood Reporter, Deadline Hollywood, Entertainment Weekly, all have pieces about this new controversy. And suddenly... So it's on the day that the nomination ballots are yeah. going out yeah. that, 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 that the headline about the film isn't incredible work, yes. people love it, it's, right. is it wrong? Is it right? Yeah, right. Exactly. For a month, uh, there's been guild screenings, there's been critic screenings, and all everyone's talking about about it's Selma. how incredible the movie this is. This movie's great, yeah. give it all the Oscars. Right. Uh, and what's the Don Draper line? When you don't want, when you don't like what's being said, change the conversation. Right. right. And suddenly this Monday, when we're, it's time to nominate Oscars, the conversation is, have you heard how controversial Selma okay. is? Have you heard how it gets history wrong? Well, let me, let me play naive for a second. Okay. Uh, and I'm just playing naive, I'm not this naive. <laughs> but like, is it, do people really like plant negative stories about oh my god other Oscar films that they're competing oh, against? Oh, it's you, w when we call it a, an award season campaigning. That's a deliberate word choice, and it is very much like a political campaign. It first of all can cost as much as at least a congressional campaign. So they're they're hiring consulting firms, oh, spending millions of dollars. People yes. are doing oppo, right? I mean, there's yes. oppo research. research. Right? They're 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 <laughs> out at at screenings. They're out at parties. They're not just talking up the film that they've been hired to push. They're talking down the films that they're competing against. And a great example you have in here is Beautiful Mind, which I had sort of mm -hmm. forgotten that there was this. Controversy. Giant. That was like one of the. What happened with that film? There was this huge oppo dump on Beautiful Mind. This was, you know, this was the the in 2000, uh, 2001. 
and Universal was giving a very hard push to the film. Ron Howard had never won an Oscar before. And suddenly there was a post on the Drudge Report about how uh, elements of bisexuality and anti-Semitism had been expunged from that script, and it was very inaccurate. Which, let me just insert myself here to say those stand in incredibly different moral categories. Exactly. But continue. Exactly. <laughs> um, and and the, the, the rumor is, the, the reporting was that a, a consultant, a freelance consultant for Miramax Films, which had you know films competing against A Beautiful Mind that year, pointed an L.A. Times writer to that Drudge Report post, and suddenly that was in the L.A. Times, and suddenly that had become the conversation about a beautiful mind that year. So it's it's uh, and John Nash who was the who was the uh, mathematician at the mm -hmm. heart of that that he had said anti-Semitic things or had right. been an anti-Semite um, and that had been sort of taken out of the movie. Yeah. There was also the the, the the Lincoln campaign was mm -hmm. was was it was really concerted and also I think tied to knocking down his Oscar choice. Absolutely, chances. yeah. That was actually that was a huge year because he had Lincoln that year, which you know all of the sort of presidential historians came out of the woodwork to talk about the discrepancies in that. That was also the year with the Zero Dark Thirty controversy, right. which was which really sort of put the skids on that film, which had been seen as very much a front runner, Fascinating. and ended up, you know, Catherine Bigelow didn't get Best Director and so forth and so on. Ultimately, played it very safe that year and went with, you know, uh, with Argo, which had significant factual inaccuracies of its own. Well, that that gets to the point here, right? right? Which is that anyone who 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 makes a film based on history yes. is going to necessarily, as a sort of narrative, uh, definitionally, right, Absolutely. is going to open themselves up to charges. Absolutely, of you know, and. and and, and it's, look, we can have the conversation about the difference between, you know, documentary and docudrama. We can have the conversation about historical fact versus historical fiction. I think it's a boring conversation, but we can have it. <laughs> but if we're going to have it year after year, we should at least understand where that conversation started. And the conversation didn't, you know, we're not having this conversation about Unbroken, because right. Unbroken is probably not going to win Best Picture. Uh. But, you know, we're not having it about Big Eyes, because Big guys may not get any nice. So this this to you, the fact that this controversy mm -hmm. says to you, people fear this as an Oscar Absolutely. powerhouse. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, they, they, and in some ways, I guess it's an encouraging sign that, that the film is being considered important enough to put this kind of oppo effort behind. It, it also occurs to me, it is, well, there is something about, you know, as long as they spell your name right. I mean, yeah. you, Selma is everywhere. I mean, it, it is. It is, it is everywhere. So, it, you know, maybe controversy also drives some people out to actually see the film. Hopefully so. Jason Bailey, thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right.